again, I do not wish to press charges on anybody. Uh, well, I do, but I tried, and no one came to my prevail. So this is Albuquerque's government, Dirty Little Secret Part 2, the secret that they'd kill me to keep. Now, when I was uh, six years old, starting with uh, Clovis, New Mexico, we'll include that one in on this one, too. Uh, I was two hours before then, I was at school in this first grade, and a officer came up there, Officer Friendly, serve and protect, and they give an oath for you with his life and all this good stuff. And then he turns around and tells me that Mr. Good, not even Mr. Good, he just said, hey boy, come here. What's well, a good nigger? A dead nigger. If your dad continues his lawsuit, you won't make it home from school one day. My dad was suing him because he had cut his finger off in the jail cell door, and he was suing him for it. And they came after me. My name is Roy Lester Goodman Jr., the first. And they came after me when I was six years old and threatened my life, run across in my yard that night and pounced around our house with their lights flashing and stuff. And they were uh, outside. And I was six years old, and we were all in the living room on the floor all night long. I seen one cross burned in my yard that next morning. Not understanding what it went on or what was going on when I was 28 years old and 17 and 32. I went to prison at 32 years old, and that for five years I didn't supposed to go. I was found incompetent. They said I was competent. I've got the paperwork from Dr. Fink himself where Clovis Jail had beat me so bad one time that I had 72 hours to live. My heartbeat was near to none. My lips were purple. My body was gray. And I was cold. And they said I had approximately, at the most, 72 hours to live if they didn't get me to the hospital. The Lieutenant Larry turned to them and told them to leave and then looked at uh, me and asked me, Mr. Goodman, what's your last request? I said, can Cole Radcliffe come sit with me until I die? I don't want to die alone. And this little 18-year-old, 19-year-old boy came and sit with me. And he was so afraid of me dying, he made me get up and walk, and he drove me around, and he kept me alive. Now, this happened in Clovis Jail. Mayor, you said that you don't have nothing to do with this. You, This is the first time you heard about it. Uh, through, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when... uh. You were holding a uh, housing uh, for everyone to thank you for getting you them housing for uh, a housing that you uh, founded, and I got housing through there. And I told you about how they broke my neck and they drug me on the freeway, and I told you about how he, Officer Chris was coming down on my neck. I told you everything, Judge Fitzwater's court, how they uh, found an officer to put on emergency administrative paid leave for tasing me. But then all of a sudden, he was never put on administrative leave. He was found to be used the proper uh, taser, and he, he he did it all correct. And this was also signed off by the chief of police, chief of internal affairs, okay, mayor, and you said you didn't know. And this is on Action 7 News was there, and they filmed it. So you do know now what happened if you didn't know then because I told you I also had a summons with your name on it mayor and you told me you didn't get it because it was dismissed with prejudice it's over them breaking my neck and chasing me and dragging me on the freeway mainly over breaking my neck and you said you didn't know nothing about it and I was explaining to you how Chris came down my neck and everything else and lieutenants or actually just some detectives came by to talk to me after a meeting with you. You told my caseworker that I was going to be able to talk to you to call you and set up a time so we can discuss this. And like I said, you had not even given me a dime, not a penny. You didn't even say sorry. And you were petting the dog more than you were petting me. And that hurt my feelings real bad. But what I really want to know is how can you people do these things to people and I sit there and watch on TV where you're worried about a dog or you're worried about this or even a woman about her hat and here's a man getting beaten within lives inches seconds of his life okay being drugged over 30 miles by his hog tie on the freeway okay from the on ramp from the jail that's out there by the city dump okay all the way downtown to 12th 
and 6th Street, 6th and 4th Street, when they were finally cut off by somebody. Well, this is being drugged by my hog tie by the back tire while I'm inside the car. They turn the radio on to keep from hearing the sound. Tased at the Presbyterian so hard, even the last time the officer tased me, I was already strapped to the bed, and they were standing at the door laughing like it was death comedy jail. I remember they just laughing, thinking it was funny on how they tased me. Him and two security guys, a little short one and a tall one. And in Judge Fitzwater's court, you will find me put on emergency administrative paid leave and pending investigation. I even pointed out the officer, the sergeant that drove me with a hog tie on the freeway. He had black, he had a uh, blonde curly hair, and I pointed him out. And they had a whole bunch of officers up there, and you weren't in there, I went You weren't there. Okay, and they switched to security guards. And I knew that those weren't the right security guards. I knew everything. My attorney, Peter Ball, well respected attorney. Uh, the courts, huh, Judge Fitzwater, you said it yourself, y'all did, DA, all of you, and uh, we're talking head DA, all y'all said detectives, y'all, y'all signed off on that warrant, huh, Judge Fitzwater, for better problem police officer, and he was being to put on emergency minute pay to leave, been an investigation, because he lied, I did not attack him, I was standing sideways facing my bed, looking down, when he hit me with the taser, and he hit me five times, and y'all said it was an authorized taser afterwards a week later and he was able to walk. When I asked y'all was do I get any money anything any y'all told me, Well we're sorry, Mr. Gibbon. We thought you were here to okay to uh just make sure that you were okay, that's it. We don't have no no records of him being found guilty. He was found guilty, Mr. Gibbon, he's found innocent. Okay. I had an attack right there at the floors of the Internal fair building right across from the sheriff and the police station. And I had an attack right there in front of y'all. And I was so tired and weak, y'all made me walk home. I had to walk from Fort downtown all the way to Gibson in San Mateo. That's over five, six miles. Easy. Easy. It's halfway across the town. So I would like to let you know this and I'll. You know a little bit, as you watch, tomorrow there will even be more for you to watch because I think I'm going to end this one and I'm going to start a new one. But remember, Albuquerque's government, their little secret. They even the secret that they kill me to keep part two.